is just fantastic. Captain's Log, subdates 21217.8. As the probe starts to send data, and the computer processes the information, I've let subfleets know of my experiment, and they seem to be intrigued. Welcome everyone to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we have three subjects I'd like to go through and one honourable mention. Before we even start, I shall be streaming on Twitch tonight some murder fun time. If you're at all interested in watching me bumble around in Assassin's Creed, my Twitch is linked in the description down below. So to start we're going to go with the honourable mention. And for this we need Jason Paradise, who is a Twitch streamer who has found a way, a genius way, to get around the more recent issues surrounding DMCAs. The man's a genius, and his Twitch is linked down below. Go give him a follow. So to start, we're going to go with a little bit of politics. Yeah, I know this isn't a politics channel, but this one's quite special, and I couldn't be bothered to make this for Moisky Live. So Kate Green, the Shadow Minister of Education who took over from Rebecca Wrong Daly, MP for Stratford and Urmston, has been speaking out on the honours system. The honours system was created after World War I to recognise the work of civilians. So you have three ranks, the CBE, MBE, OBE. I don't know if that's the correct order, I highly doubt it. They stand for Commander of the British Empire, Member of the British Empire and Oblong of the British Empire. The part that bothers Kate Green, though, is references to the British Empire, which she has deemed hurtful to people, where she spoke on the Political Thinking podcast, which is part of the BBC, where she said, it's really the wrong language. It's divisive, it's offensive and hurtful to people. One of the things I've been looking at a lot in recent weeks is the Black Curriculum Campaign and decolonizing our history and the whole curriculum. You can't excuse or justify that branding. It is worth pointing out now when it comes to the subject of curriculum and decolonizing it. The Conservative government correctly stands against this, along with critical race theory being taught as if fact, because it just creates more divisiveness and more pain. As far as decolonizing our history goes, it is British history. We had an empire. We should talk about it. The positives and the negatives. But at no point should we then use it to chastise somebody for something they can't change. Which is what Labour have been pushing. Which is surprising. You would have thought they would have learnt their lesson by now. Turns out, they have not. But this isn't why I want to draw attention to Kate Green. No, no, no. It's actually reference to the honour system. Because in 2015, in recognition for her work in helping children, Kate Green was awarded an OBE. Hypocrisy, thy name is... Oh, I just can't put my finger on it. A few weeks ago, Channel 5 announced that they had cast Jodie Turner-Smith to portray Anne Boleyn in a period drama. Understandably, there is a fair amount of criticism here, and I did discuss it then. But I'm going to revisit it now because some more information has come to light which really doesn't help. The main criticism is that while many actors are accused of whitewashing Hollywood, the role has been reversed and it is being treated as if it is in some way okay for one group but not another. Now granted, if memory serves, there was a TV show I was quite fond of called Merlin where Guinevere was played by Angel Coolby, who herself is not white, but it wasn't exactly based on historical accuracy, it was an entertainment, almost comedy. But that is a distraction from the more recent announcement of Jodie Turner-Smith portraying Anne Boleyn, because there were other criticisms, the most notable was the aforementioned 
whitewashing being bad, but this being okay. Well, as filming has recommenced, Jodie Turner-Smith has spoken about her portrayal as Anne Boleyn, and some of the reasons given are really stupid. For example, this is to challenge the convention by casting a black actress to portray Henry VIII's wife. Let's ignore the fact that Elizabeth, his daughter from Anne Boleyn, was very, very pale. But of course, history doesn't matter, everyone. This is about challenging conventions. But also, to shine a feminist light on her story. Because as the patriarchy closes in around her, she is challenging those conventions. By the way, you might think I'm paraphrasing here a little. I'm really not. Most of that was verbatim from her. (laughs) Ordinarily, I take no issue with who gets cast as what, but I stand by what I said. I want to see Daniel Radcliffe as Martin Luther King now. It is, after all, only fair. (laughs) But jokes aside, if you want to do a period drama, you have to do it accurately. Otherwise, it is not a period drama. It is a parody drama. And that sounds really insensitive. But that is history for you. You can't change history to suit narratives now. And Amberlynn didn't have the patriarchy closing in on her. She had one grumpy, frumpy king who wanted a son, didn't get his son, got close to Jane Seymour, wanted her instead, and yeeted her because he couldn't find another way of divorcing her. Till death do us part, after all? So to our final story, we go to Ariel Boggle. Bogle. Boggle. Bogle. Ariel Blue Checkmark on Twitter. I listened to so many hours of Steve Bannon's podcast for this, so please have a read, my look at the role podcast play in the misinformation ecosystem and the inevitable fight over if and how they can be moderated. Also, my first for The Guardian. First question, if this is about Steve Bannon, why do you have a picture of Joe Rogan on the thumbnail? Bit disingenuous, don't you think? And I'll be honest, we all knew this was for The Guardian because you only listened to Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon sits on the, what many dub, the alt-right. Remember everyone, those who write for The Guardian typically can't introspect. Within the article, an argument is framed, and it is based around a girl called Amelia and her father, because her father loses faith in Fox News. Why had they conceded the election and not focused on voter fraud? so he had turned to alternative sources of information. The long and short is, he was looking for confirmation bias. We can call it information if you like, but quite frankly, your election is so messy. Whoever is the winner, whoever is inaugurated, is going to be plagued with the word corruption, regardless. Perhaps illegitimate. At this point, though, it doesn't matter. The mainstream media support Biden, so those words will be buried which means more and more who have been disenfranchised because of this will turn to alternative sources that will in turn give them what they're looking for. And sadly, whereas this should be a straight-up black-and-white issue, it's gotten murky, and it will remain as such for the next four years regardless. And I'm sorry to all of those who have been negatively impacted by this, but this election was a mess. Ariel Blue Check Mark continues by talking about Steve Bannon, his podcast, and uses Joe Rogan as the thumbnail because he has given platform to people who are considered far right, but he's also rarely made errors. But he has always corrected those errors. His podcast, by the way, is not news, it is entertainment. It's why Spotify signed him up for so much money, because the man brings in a lot of traffic. To continue the article, Ariel Blue Checkmark goes in on Bannon's War Room podcast. A number of episodes have been removed from YouTube because they discuss the pandemic response, FBI directors, and make some rather derogatory comments about what they'd like to do to certain people that they don't like. To then continue to use this to frame an argument, which is what the article does, to then suggest with a very boomer-style mentality of, we need regulation on podcasts because... And then I'll insert this because this is the first thing I thought. Mainstream media is under threat. We must protect it as the legitimate source, kind of like YouTube does, 
with protecting all those verifiable authoritative news sources, with additional rules and regulation, maybe even a licence, especially if you're British. You're not allowed to speak unless you have one. Kind of like your COVID vaccination card. Utter tripe. That's what the article is. I will link it down below if you'd like a good chuckle. As we're done here, I'd love to know what you think. Please do let me know in the comments down below. If I don't see you on Twitch for Murder Fun Time, have a fantastic Thursday. And thank you all for listening.